In a world where everybody used to drive a Ford Mondeo, but then they all realised they could afford a BMW or a Mercedes Benz, so they bought one of them instead. Comes a new, better, posher Mondeo, and it wants revenge. Ford Mondeo 5, middle management takedown. Prepare to discover interior hewn from granite, well weighted controls, magic carpet ride, cornering on rails, and as little as 94 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometre. I am exactly the sort of aspirational middle manager that Ford hopes will be drawn to this, the latest Mondeo. The question is, does it have the right sort of appeal for an image conscious up and comer like me? Well, let's find out as we put 10 honest things on your radar. Good? Got away with it, you reckon? The Ford Mondeo and the Ford Sierra before it, and even the Cortina before that, are synonymous with run-of-the-mill mainstream Britain and faraway planets by the looks of things. Anyway, they've always been decent, but also seen as sort of a mass market stepping stone for thrusting up and comers to something better and more expensive, and usually something German. But just to give you an example of how times have changed, when the first Mondeo came out in 1993, Ford shifted almost 89,000 of them in that year alone. By contrast, in 2015, Ford shifted about 20,000 Mondeos, while BMW sold 37,000 3 Series. Even Audi outsold the Mondeo with the A4. Heck, Infinity might do it one day. <laughs> it's like the world has turned upside down. But this situation has made Ford drag itself around and make a car that actually competes with the German Uber guns. The result is that this Mondeo, ordinary as it is, is absolutely bar excellent. Now let's assume business is going quite slowly and you've had to get a car at the bottom of the Mondeo range. Well, it would be called Style, it would have a 120 horsepower diesel engine, and it would cost you about 21 grand. But when you looked at the spec sheet, you would find it was very, very long indeed. And it would include an eight inch color touchscreen, 16 inch alloy wheels, DAB radio, dual zone electronic auto temperature control, cruise control, isofix attachments for the kids, electronic parking brake, hill launch assist, LED tail lights, the list goes on. And it would be fantastic on the motorway. It's just so, serene in here. Ford has also made this really cheap to run for what is in actual fact a massive car. Honestly, this proposition has so much low hanging fruit, it's just win upon win upon win. Here's the cost analysis. So if you're willing to live with just 120 PS's, you can expect to achieve fuel economy in the 70s-ish. And if you're a low rate taxpayer, you'll pay just 57 pounds per month to the government coffers, whoever they are. They call that an ROI success. Now that version is exactly what you'd go for if you're cost conscious above all else. But if you want a bit more oomph or a bit more kit, there are loads of versions of the Mondeo to choose from. Most of which do that without harming your bottom line. I say most because there are a couple to avoid, like this one. Now that's because one of the key USPs of the Mondeo is this enormous hatchback, which makes it really practical. So the boot starts at that big with the seats up and if you put the seats down, it goes to that big, which is massive. Plus it comes with this, which appears to be a portable conference table. So you see, it's this holistic approach to hatchbackery that makes us such vociferous product evangelists for the Ford Mondeo. But back to the Mondeo Hybrid, while it might look great on the balance sheet because it's a 187 horsepower car with just 99 grams of CO2, because of all the battery and stuff, the boot shrinks to just 383 litres, and you can't fold the rear seats down like this. And I'm still here, because there's more. We can tell you that this cabin is perfectly lovely, almost as high quality as anything German, but Ford is so obsessed with making the Mondeo premium that it does a version with a bit more leather and chrome in it. Ford calls that version the Vignali, and will charge you 34 grand for one. 34 grand! Now for that you get Hang on, a, a high series execution and enhanced ownership experience, according to someone at Ford. 
I think that means they'll call you sir when you hang around the showroom. But surely that's too much for a Sierra, what? But if you stick to the mid-level stuff, then the Mondeo makes all the sense in the world. It is massive, it's really well equipped, it's really lovely to drive, it's dead safe, it's good looking. It's basically everything that a 3 Series is and a bit more. And it's also more exclusive. What's not alike? What? Bite his hand off at that price. Yep, yeah, sell, sell. Faxes the details. All right, we launch this here. See you later, mate. Bye. <sighs> Don't go. Oh, 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 no. I haven't done the intro yet.